Hello, welcome to Talk Gnosis, a show about Gnosticism, about the ideas and history of Gnosticism, and anything else that might cross the threshold of what we Gnostics find interesting. I'm Jason Memmel, and today we're going to be chatting with Scott Jones, writer and sorcerer. We're going to talk about his upcoming book, Drill, and some of the intentions around that work, and some of the intersections with Gnostic approaches to the world. I was lucky to read a draft of this work and give notes, and let me tell you, this book is powerful. It mixes horror, magic, autofiction. The book turns into a conversation between you, a version of Scott, and the forces swirling around the world as we know it. You're never quite sure where fiction and fact transition between each other and when where that lives where you're reading. I should note also that uh, my personal approach around Gnosticism generally involves seeing art and culture as accessing the same forces and elements as religious, mystical, or magical processes. It's all tapping to the same stream, in my opinion. And I'll be using that frame in many of my questions and follow-ups. So just to give everybody a, a heads up on that. So, Scott, introduce yourself and uh, and drill if you can. I just want to say thanks for that, Jason. That was great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 Scott R. Jones. I'm a writer of uh, weird and uh, horrific fictions. The novel in question is called Drill. Uh, it is oh, Drill is many things. It is a auto fictional meta narrative uh, with hyperstitional and uh, magical sort of occult elements strung throughout. Uh, it has a it has an occult through line. Let's let, let's let, let's put it that way. Mm. Um, it is uh, it is a living curse. I recently described it on TikTok as a as an uh, occult machine. Mm. Uh, the the book is a part of the of the total machine that I have that I have built. Uh, but when I say it's a living curse, that's is essentially the main conceit mm. is that we, is that we, we have in this book a, a a functional occult working that is activated by readership there you go mm -hmm. is uh, is it also oh go ahead no no, no after you <laughs> well i was i was gonna say like is it uh because there, there might be um oh i should also say maybe right at the top here uh at the moment we're speaking it's uh late august and um or sorry late august <laughs> late July, uh, late early July. August. Early August is when the book goes on pre-order, which is kind of why mm. we, we we tried to make this happen quickly. It's um, already on. It's already on pre-order. You can pre-order it now. It, oh, it, right. re it, re it releases officially on Tuesday, August the sixth. Ah, perfect. Okay, right. yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, I, <laughs> no I, problem. For my, in my head, it was just August sixth. August sixth. Um, yeah. But uh, well, and part of the reason I got get confused about that is because I already read it. So it's for me, it's a uh, right. It, it, my pre-release was like half a year ago. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. And thank you for reading it. Oh, I loved yeah. it. Um, well, and so so the thing I was going to say is that for anybody who's listening to this, and it's before August sixth, and you still want to pre-order it, uh, which you should, or if it's after August sixth, just go and get it. Um, uh, is it maybe if it even might be worth just describing like. The bones of it, like the the plot, you know what I mean, like the the, right. the what happens, um, that that everything you've talked about streaming it uh, streams through. Mm -hmm. The bare bones plot is it's 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 a record of my reaction to being shunned by my Jehovah's Witness elder father. Mm. I, uh, I don't know how many readers will be familiar with the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're a fairly large cult. Uh, I grew up as one. Uh, I escaped in my late twenties. I'm now in my early fifties. Mm. Uh, for a long while, my family was, uh, still talking to me because I had the, uh, I had the foreknowledge, I guess, to leave in such a way that, uh, I wouldn't actually be shunned. Hmm. Right. That would, that was my goal. So I did what did what they now call fading, right. Where I just hmm. stopped, stopped going to church meetings. I stopped involving myself. I stopped giving money. I stopped all that stuff and, uh, you know, just kind of faded away. 
which, you know, I felt for years, my family was secretly great grateful for this path I took because it allowed them to still talk to me. Mm. Had I had some massive blowout, you know, had I done something, you know, worthy of shunning in their eyes, then obviously I would, I would be shunned. This went on for some years until finally, uh, well, it was right after my first, uh, my first kid was born, my boy, Sean. Uh, I was feeling very expansive and squishy, you know, <laughs> towards, uh, towards humans in general. And because of, you know, having been rendered a new father and uh, I ended up contacting somebody on Facebook that was probably a bad egg you know, and they took one look at my Facebook feed and decided that I was, uh, decided that, uh, and they were a distant cousin too, mm. right? They were just somebody I was like, oh, I haven't talked to that guy in a while. I'll just pop him a, pop him a message here on, here on FB and see what, see what comes back. Well, what came back was just a tirade of self-righteousness. Mm. And he informed me that, uh, you know, he'd be informing my, informing my dad about all this. Mm. You know, which was, you know, a hard thing to hear in your 40s. <laughs> it's, so, gonna, it's so stupid. You're going to tell, tell, tell my dad? <laughs> you're going to tell my dad about my occult leanings and my celebration of Christmas? You know, <laughs> for one thing, they already knew I celebrated Christmas. I'd married an Anglican woman. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, this, is, this was not something that was hard for the rest of the family to grok. Mm. But uh, what essentially happened that was after that interaction, my father basically sent me a letter saying, we understand you celebrate Christmas. Basically, this cousin had put my father's hand to the fire, mm. right? And at risk of being disfellowshipped himself, you know, he, uh, he decides to shun me. So, and that's been the case for the last 13 years now. Mm-hmm. My father, as I make, as I make a uh, I point out several times in the book lives not a five minute drive away from me. Mm. You know, that's a leisurely Sunday drive, Yeah, you know, and he could be here at his firstborn son's house, you know, and enjoying all the, you know, enjoying all the aspects of that, you know, his grandchildren who he's never met Mm. a lie. He met his, he met his grandson once, but that was, the kid was barely a day old. Mm. So, you know, that hardly counts. I don't think. Uh, you know, it's the great sorrow of my life. It's the great wound in my life that my father has chosen to, uh, uh, you know, uh, side with this cult, you know, over mm-hmm. his own, over his own flesh and blood. Um, so it's my reaction to that. It's, I decided basically that I would, I would return that energy in a, in a, in a magical sense, mm-hmm. Right. And also, you know, really go for broke and uh, mm. and shoot for the destruction of his cult and the murder of his god. <laughs> Which right? I've got to say, when when uh, <laughs> a- ambitious intentions when it comes to magical and literary uh, practices, that's that's a high yeah. <laughs> But uh, but I mean it literally. When I say mur- murder his god, I, I I do mean that literally. I believe that if you cut off the head, the body will die. And if we can somehow infect not just the popular culture, but the culture itself, mm. you know, with the idea that the 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 so called Jehovah of the Jehovah's Witnesses is a psychotic mad mad god, mm-hmm. you know, straight out of Lovecraft. Mm. And is something to be something to be avoided and uh, and and more destroyed if we can do it. Mm-hmm. And I believe drill is the weapon to do it. I've built drill from the ground up to do just that. Uh, that's my, that's part of my intention intention with with the book. Yeah, and like so, the experience of reading it is has was like getting because I've known you for a while now, um, and so even reading it, I knew which parts felt at least most like you, if not some, like somewhat fictionalized in, in some way. Sure. Um, and then alongside all of that, there is also like a more, both a metafictional, but also like a, you know, magical uh, slash horror um, dimension, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, like literally the, the, the sappers and the drillers and the, like 
the, sure. The the, uh, the, 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 the the central entities. conceit is the drill. Yeah. Totally. You know. Yeah. Uh, can you maybe explain that central conceit within sort of the, the 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 frame of the book? Like, what is the drill? You know, who are the yeah? Cycles? I had an uh, sure. I had an early vision of sort of the spiral nature of of uh, of, of reality. You know, we're never ever going in circles. We're either we're, we are going in circles, but we we ascend upwards or we descend downwards, depending on where we are on the uh, on the spiral curve. Um, which just got me to thinking that, you know, what if the entire universe, an entire reality was essentially some sort of drilling machine mm. that we're all involved in this rotational excavation of something? Mm. What would, what, what would the, what would a universe be excavating? Well, something bigger than a universe, <laughs> I'm like, well, the body of God at that point, you know, is, is one way you could, you could, you could approach that. So the the central idea is that is that the universe is a drill, mm. and that uh, there are these characters called sappers, right? Who are who are metaphysically involved and sort of you know tied up in the uh, in the uh, in the functioning of the drill, mm. right? In the in the proper functioning of the drill, and you know searching out. Ha! Huh. What does the drill search out? The body of God is infinite, right? The job mm -hmm. never ends. There's no such thing as direction outside of the universe. So what is what? What are they shooting for? Well, they're looking for the you know the the vital organs, the brain, the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, some something to uh, to uh, basically uh, kill the deity and uh, assume uh, assume. Uh, themselves as the prime reality mm. if, if that's if that's making sense at all <laughs> i think so I, well, like, I think so because like alongside all of that we've got uh the scott jones of the book who meets the sappers right you know um yeah which is like that sort of that that interstitial meta narrative uh that that's where they meet you know what i mean like mm -hmm. there's the there's, yeah. there's the, the the parts of the story that are that are, to me seem so clearly either either completely or nearly autobiographical, and then and then moments where it's the the sort of fiction Scott meeting the sapper, you know, right? Um, and I think like that's that's where our desire to engage with that image, like the the image of the drill and what it's drilling for and where why it would be drilling like how we can get invested in it because alongside mm. of me, there's this like deeply human relationship, you know? Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I'm hoping for with the, uh, with the, uh, well, with what folks think of it is that the, I, 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 I mean, God help me if I ever write anything more personal than drill, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I just don't, I just don't think it would be, it would be possible, but you know, what I'm hoping for is, you know, I've heard this a lot in media and the arts recently is that, you know, the personal becomes the universal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In that, you know, by going deep into my own personal uh, uh, material with this, you know, that I'm, that I'm somehow, you know, making a transcendent piece of art, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. the goal. That was the goal. Anyways, I don't know that it's my best work, but it is my great work. Yeah. You know, yeah. In terms of, in terms of like, in terms of my work as a, as, as a sorcerer and a Gnostic, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, this is, this is the great work, capital G, capital W. Uh, and, yeah. and that definitely comes across. And I think like, as anyone who's reading the book, who is both, who is in, in like interested in that particular intersection, I think it's really, mm -hmm. Uh, as like as I am, I think that really comes across. It, it like and in that respect was actually kind of inspiring. Like you know, um, what what would as as a similar like as somebody who also tries to explore this art magic intersection, it definitely made me go like, what would my version of drill look like? Considering that I have none of the same experiences, you know what I mean, or drives. Um, but what was that? What would that level of both honesty and imagination look like? You know, mm. um, uh, and so it, very inspiring from that perspective. But one thing I want to I want to kind of go back to, just for um, for anybody listening who's like kind of going, okay, this sounds cool, 
but I'm, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I don't really know the details of that. Um, like I'll, I'll say for myself, I didn't really, like I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not even that devout from a, from in terms of my religious background um, or like didn't come from like a deeply sure. rigorous, you know, um, like uh, it was, a, I, I joke, I was raised lackadaisical Lutheran. Like it was a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like we had a pastor who played guitar, like nothing was that hardcore, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty easy going. Um, uh, and I still found it deeply compelling and, um, and uh, you know, like horrifying in the times when it needs to be horrifying and, and like inspiring as an artist, that kind of thing. But do you have any feelings about, or thoughts about like, readers who don't share who don't, who don't come from that sort of paradigm do you uh um do you have any like any any anything you'd want to sort of say to somebody listening who is like should i read this book if i'm not jehovah's witness do you know what i mean yeah absolutely uh you should read this book even if you're not a jehovah's witnesses even if you're not a jw because jws are in the world hmm. okay that's you know one of this the secondary target you know, when we have this, the, the, the weapon that is drill has multiple targets, but one of one of the targets, I term it the secondary target, is actually the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and New York, a.k.a. Mm. the Jehovah's Witnesses, right? I mean, I've, I've been, I'm on TikTok now these days because my publisher insists, you know, you, <laughs> you, you shoot fish where the fish are. <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, so I've been going on about exactly why they are such a dangerous cult. And I think, yeah, you, if you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you need to know, mm -hmm. you know, this is a, this is a book that has, has information that you, that, that will benefit you in terms of, you know, staying away from this particular cult and mm. indeed in, you know, helping anybody that, you know, who is, who is in the cult and is looking to get out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's an inoculation against, uh, against the, uh, the cult machinations of the Watchtower Society. Uh, what else to say about it? Um, in terms of, you, do you need to know a lot about Jehovah's Witnesses before going into drill? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I let you know the most pertinent stuff, and all the crazy stuff, and uh, and I think what people are going to be shocked by is like, there's no way it's that crazy in there. It's like, well, do your research then. You know, uh, you know, uh, make a make an effort to uh, Google Jehovah's Witnesses and then see whether I'm, you know, see whether I'm full of shit or not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a yeah. you know it's a it's a very uh it's a it's it's one of those uh deeply disturbing and uh upsetting rabbit holes to go down mm. so i hope that in a way i inoculate you against the worst ravages of that rabbit hole <laughs> uh and you know and and do it and do it in a in, a, in an entertaining fashion right there's also something here, like, because again, most of the people listening to this are either going to be Gnostics or interested in Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there, there might also be an interesting thing here, too, where, uh, like, your 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 uh, weapon is targeting a very specific, um, tar it has specific targets. But I think there's something like, um, again, going back to the, the specific being universal, if you are a Gnostic trying to figure out how to move through a world that does seem limiting and oppressive and like has other limiting and oppressive forces in it. Like it's, I think there's kind of um, like by watching you fight JHVH1, mm. it like, you know, makes me like, um, you know, also like raise my guard against like, like, you know, I don't know, um, Beelzebub capitalism or whatever the, the sure. Order. The egregore, yeah. the like limiting egregore of choice, you know. Sure. No, I mean it's 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 a mo it's an it's an occult model for how to how to approach you know these these deities. I mean, I in in order for the book to be functional, you know, I've basically taken the existence of Jehovah as a literal thing, mm -hmm. you know, in that in that it's. Uh, you know, it's an egregore. It's, you know, it's something that's made out of thought itself, you know, but it has an autonomous existence. It has, you know, it has its own 
uh, it has its own agenda. Mm. And you can see the agenda when you look at the when you look at the followers, mm -hmm. right? You you can see where the deceit lies. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see what the actual goal of the thing is. You know, and you know because because you know as the good book tells us, you know their the, their fruits are how you shall know them or what you shall know them by, mm -hmm. right? So I'm drill is in a lot of ways just me pointing out the fruits. Mm -hmm. saying, you know, this is the kind of God we're talking about. We're talking about a genocidal mad, mad person. You know, we're talking about you. We're talking about somebody who loves it when kids die because they don't take blood transfusions, you know? Well, yeah. That, that, okay. that, that God just loves it. You know, yeah. uh, you know, he loves seeing marriages destroyed. He loves seeing, you know, uh, uh, children and parents being shunned. You know, he loves division. He's a storm god. You know, back in the day, before Jehovah got a lucky pickup by you know Charles Taze Russell in the you know late eighteen hundreds. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, he was a lower tier, you know, Sumerian uh, 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 sort of you know in that in that region. Sorry, mm -hmm. did I say Sumerian? I meant uh, not Sumerian. Oh, anyway, um, Me Mesopotamian. It's a yeah. general Mesopotamian mm -hmm. pantheon of which he wasn't even the top guy. Mm -hmm. The top guy was El, <laughs> you know, which is where we get the word Israel, Bethel, Bethlehem. You know, this, mm. this, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. Jehovah, no, no. Wasn't even, Je Jehovah wasn't even the, uh, you know, the head, the head honcho. I, but, I feel uh, like uh, uh, this would be a quick moment to tell anyone interested in this to go look up uh, <laughs> Esoterica. Uh, yes. Uh, he did a great episode on this whole he thing. He did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, I kind of to, to kind of cut you off there. Um, no, no. Well, and there's something there too. Like when you we talk about it being a storm god, there's something about like uh, that all of these things, like broken up families, children who can't get the health thing or the, the, the health care they need, these are essentially like sacrifices on the pyre, proof of love. Do you know what I mean? Like I, proof of yeah, love God they more than they absolutely yeah. are. I've seen yeah. this, I've seen this happen, you know. Uh I've seen this happen personally. Hmm. You know, where 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 people people that I knew, you know, were just praised up and down after they'd died because they'd stayed faithful to Jehovah. It's like, dude, the whole blood doctrine that you know basically caused you to suicide yourself in the hospital, which the doctors love. Yeah. Doc doctors love it when people suicide in hospitals, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's their whole thing. No, <laughs> but <sighs> sorry, I get flustered and angry when I, when I think about no, the no. doctor because I've seen so much, uh, I've seen so much hardship caused from it, but yeah, that's, it's definitely a, a type of, a type of sacrifice. You know, this God yeah. benefits in some way. It likes it when it mm -hmm. likes it when people do this. So um, yeah, he's got to he's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so this might be I don't, there's a bit of a segue, but like uh, um, this might be kind of a good point to ask about your own sort of Gnostic origin story as it relates to because like the, the the book is your biography in a lot of ways or it's autobiography. Um, yeah. But like, where where did Gnosticism slash sorcery, etc. Kind of uh, where did that sort of kickstart for you? Like, where did you go? Oh, this is this is something that I that sort of speaks to me, you know? Because um, uh, yeah, I just I always find that kind of thing fascinating, and I think it relates to kind of where we're at here. Yeah, well, I found it interesting, Jason, when you mentioned earlier the the. the uh... You know the the nature of these limiting concepts, these egregores, you know, of mm. which Jehovah of which Jehovah is one. Um, you know, growing up as Jeho as Jehovah's Witness, you know, growing up as a kid who was obsessed with the Book of Revelation, mm. <laughs> right? Uh, growing up in that way, I was kind of already on the inside track for Gnosticism. I figured. <laughs> you know, be, be, because yeah. because I had my very own Yaldabaoth, you know, uh, that I had to contend with, and you know, worship, love, and fear, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all all these things, you know, it was and it was always telling to me that the fear came up a lot more often than the other the other things. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So when I did finally escape and I, I, I left on doctrinal terms, I basically Mm -hmm. was coming to the conclusion that, you know, if, if God was really as much of an asshole as the Jehovah's witnesses, uh, 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 make him out to be, Mm -hmm. then I wanted nothing to do with it. You know, Mm -hmm. this is a, this is a creature who, uh, this is a creature who, you know, is, whose great cosmic plan is to genocide most of the planet, leaving only, leaving only good uh, Jehovah's Witnesses alive. Mm. You know, that made no sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I did finally get out and I started uh, coming across, because I immediately became interested in the occult. Mm. Uh, I think that was just naturally how I was leaning, you know, from, from very early on in my life. Mm. Due, to, due to several, you know, what, could be termed supernatural experiences or at least extra extra normal experiences where there mm-hmm. was there was really something going on which you know put the wind up me basically mm. uh sorry i got distracted there no that's second. okay um <laughs> but so yeah so uh, you're you're getting into uh, um the occult and magic and mysticism and stuff yeah yeah yeah, that that was the. Uh, I think it was a natural progression. I think from you know be, be being a Jehovah's Witness, and then an ex Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, and then you know it just it was and it was a combination of a lot of a lot of events and people coming into my life at the at the time. And uh, yeah, I'd say that's where I got my foot in the door as far as Gnosticism was concerned. Mm. Uh, it just it 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 made it it the ba- the basics of Gnosticism made sense to me. Right. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 the idea that this is that there is a, pr- a prison element yeah to, to this existence you know well, I felt I felt that keenly yeah this is interesting so like I um, uh, my own it, like interest in Gnosticism kind of came from the other direction I didn't I never had a prison world experience in my in my right. background which hey I feel pretty grateful for. Um, yeah, <laughs> but what what actually really got me was the idea of gnosis, the idea of like the, the sure. connection to something much bigger and and other than me, um, and and that and that it, that it would be, uh, it would feel liberatory, like it would feel like you're being released from something, you know? Yes. Um, uh, and so um, maybe I guess the uh, a question I would have for you at the mo- like kind of where you're at now with like drill now complete, but having gone through it and. Um, uh, and you've been, you've been working a lot on studying the prison bars and the jailers, if that makes sense. Um, Mm. what, do you have any sense of like what lies beyond those bars? You know, what that, what gnosis is versus what, uh, what, what the prison is? What lies beyond the bars? I have a sense that it's it's more of the same but better. <laughs> um, that there's this, like I mentioned earlier, this uh, sort of the spiral nature of ex- mm. of, uh, of, of existence. You know, I believe that the higher you get up the uh, get up the chain of being, you know, the more re- the more refined it might become. Mm. Mm-hmm. Can't know that here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a theory. Hard, hard, hard to hard to know it here where we're yeah. embedded. But I do feel like we are Im- embedded. That there's some uh, some aspect of reality speaks to that for me. In that mm. we're we're from here, mm-hmm. right? We are. You know, we 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 definitely have our incarnation here, mm-hmm. and yet and yet there's some element to our. I don't know what words you want to use for it, but you know, for lack of a better one, there's some element of our soul that downloads from somewhere else. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, I, I like that a lot as a as an approach. Like, um, the, I, I often feel uh, that it, the like the overly say binary version of like a say fallen world, perfect world, or mm-hmm. um, you know. Uh, which, like, frankly, I blame Plato for. I think if Plato showed up today, he'd like sure he'd he'd look at like well, almost everything and be like, oh shit, you guys took that really literally. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, 
but I think uh, uh, what I really appreciate about the way you articulated that is that it acknowledges that we're living in a in a world that at least has a sense of separation about it, a, a separation between uh, between like a realm of thought, a realm of feeling, and a realm mm -hmm. of incarnation, physicality, experience. But it isn't trying to assume that one is above the other in a like in a binary way, you know. Yeah. Like I, th there, there's a sense of progression, I think, in what what you're kind of talking about, like that it might be the same but better, and yeah. like maybe it's a, just a process of infinitely better, you know, like um, could be, but not uh, not like um, I'm kind of rambling here, but not simply like get out of this world so you can go to a better world because there's also that there can be a sense of nihilism with some like hardcore uh versions of gnosticism where it's like this world has fallen therefore everything in this world has fallen therefore you know check out yeah. as soon as you can kind of thing um, yeah no i'm, I'm th there is that aspect to it to it of course but yeah. you know i like what you said there it's like uh i th think it was grant morrison who said uh this world is the part of heaven we can touch Mm, yeah, you know, I, I've always taken that with me, and and, and I, I love I love that quote. You mm -hmm. know, is that here we have an an an, an enmeshing, an enmeshment, you know, in the in this in the stuff of the world, and we can't get away from it because all our other experiences uh, here, you know, derive from that enmeshment, from that mm -hmm. you know, from that incarnation. So yeah, it's a it's it's a tricky thing to say what's beyond the bars, because mm. technically we're already beyond it, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the, that's what the Buddha said. That's what Christ said. You know, the kingdom yeah. of heaven is here. It's just you just have to realize it, mm. uh, but tricky to do and tricky yeah. to keep up. You know. Well, and like I think what I what I keep. Uh, um, really kind of thinking of a lot about is like, I, I'm very not interested in versions of Gnosticism that are only focused on, on the neg negativity of the world. Um, mm. However, we're, I'm going to bring this back to your book here is that like, I think what's fascinating about your book is that it both shows that enmeshment and does not shy away from, uh, from the enmeshment and the prison elements, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, uh, uh, but it also doesn't only live there. Like it also lives in moments of love and um, and like sorrow, like the, the the sorrow of the the lack of love or the the you know the yeah. the, 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 the 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 theft of love, you know, by J H V H one. But uh, where was I gonna? I was gonna mention something. I was going there somewhere specific. Ah, part of why uh, part of how I think the book accomplishes this, how you accomplish this is i think through intense honesty um in the book like as you said like yeah. god help you if you ever tried to write something this honest again you know oh sure i don't i don't i don't come off well in this book at all <laughs> <laughs> you know well and this is a, this i guess kind of a question for you both like this is me asking you as a writer as a, as a creator but it's also me asking you as a you know like as we were saying there about the, about um you know uh, both focusing or a, um, studying the prison bars, but also what lies beyond them. Um, I think the honesty is part of what makes it as powerful as it is. Like if it were only, you know, like if Scott Jones were a side character and we mostly spent time with the sappers, it wouldn't be nearly as, as powerful, you know? Right. Um, can you talk a bit about like the choice to be that honest um, as it relates to like the, the sorceress work, but also the creative work? I look at them as basically the, those moments of like very intense, intense honesty. I, I look at them as being sort of like, uh, I'm jamming a wedge in, mm. you know, if the, if the reader has uh, up until that point, not really engaged, you know, I'm going to basically induce this almost a derangement in them, mm. you know, with, with the intense honesty where it's like, it can't be that honest, can it? <laughs> you know, yeah. But I, I set up that I set up that push pull where they're like, "Wait a second and it opens it up. It mm -hmm. opens it opens you back up into the narrative and, and forces you to take it a little more seriously because I just you know unloaded some you know. And 
one of the things my grandfather who was also a Jehovah's Witness elder. I'm a th I was a third generation JW kid. Oh wow! Uh, he always used to. One thing he I take away from him was uh, half the lies I tell are true, is what he would say to me as a kid. You know, in order to you know do my little head in, half the lies <laughs> I tell are true. H half the lies I tell are true is was you know kind of a watchword for me uh, mm. when writing drill because there's intensely honest moments that just never happened. Right. Right. And then right. there's intensely honest moments that are like, yeah, that's definitely a thing, but I don't let you know which ones. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of have to, you know, coming at the, coming at the character of Scott, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the book, you had, you're kind of forced to a, a kind of derangement in your thinking as, as, as you read. And I, I hope that that's an in, you know, that's part of, what the machinery of drill is about is extracting that energy from the reader yeah, and, yeah. Insert, and inserting it into the working into the into the magical working yeah uh, and you can't extract before unless you unless you open up the reader yeah so the only way to open up that i know how to do it as a writer is to be honest mm -hmm. you know yeah but then i play with it and it's, it's auto fictional it's my life but you know slanted mm -hmm. Yeah, but tell it slant. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, there's also something here too. Like I think a lot about, um, uh, again, like conversations that I have with like Gnostics on Reddit or what have you, um, and that like what I the reason I bring this up here is that there is a um, what the what the honesty in this book does as a as reading it as a Gnostic and reading it as watching a, a Gnostic or Gnostic inclined person move through this working is it also i think like make sure that i'm honest with myself as a gnostic mm. if that makes sense like it's a bit sure. of a like i i think if you are gnostically inclined and then you read this book you can't even if you're not a jehovah's witness even if you feel like you're distant enough from that whole thing to not really hang on to much of it at all like um i think you're probably still going to sit there and go like okay what is my relationship to mm -hmm. gnosis to archons or demiurges or, or any level of cosmology that you're applying there, you know, sure. um, in a way that I think can only be healthy because I, I, um, like I, I joke sometimes that, um, I see questions online from, from Gnostics or from people who want to get into Gnosticism. And it feels like, like they want to say like, here's the new boss, same as the old boss, just more powerful. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, sure. yeah, and I'm yeah. like, no, no, none of the rules apply anymore. Like none of, there's yeah. no, you, you don't get uh, um, there, there's no D and D manual that tells you which archon is more powerful than another one. Like um, it's, it's, uh, it's questions all the way down and it's honesty all the way through, you know, all the way uh, through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I, I think in that respect too, it's it, this wouldn't keep anybody from being Gnostic, but I think it would enhance their Gnosticism, this book. Nice. Thank you yeah. for that. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's, uh... I can, I can, I can run with that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please do. Yeah. Like in, as you're talking to anyone else about it too, like that would be something I would, I would uh, 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 definitely help use that use to advertise it. Um, I'm trying to, I'm just looking at my questions here to see if there's anything that, um, that specifically about the book I wanted to touch on. Um, so, uh, the so maybe to like to kind of just we've we talked a bit about your origin story and about you yourself individually oh, um, origin story <laughs> <laughs> what uh uh like and then the book itself is a magical working as much as it is a creative working mm -hmm. um as a as a like you know the book is out now or going to be out soon um w like what are you doing uh like beyond drill as a as a Gnostic sorcerer, you know, like what's your, are you still using uh, narrative artistic magical practices in your day to day? Uh, you know, I've taken the, there's an aspect that I wanted to touch on actually, because I have uh, begun working with, uh, in, or, in order to make my day job as a mailman uh, more tolerable, which comes up in the book, I should say. Which which comes up in the book, yes. There, there's lot there's lots of postal content 
<laughs> because I find the post office to be just, you know, almost Lovecraftian in nature. It's, it's very strange in there. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, surprised that the mail gets delivered at all, but it does. It's like this massive filtration feeder organism, you know, <laughs> it's disguised as this fleet of trucks and these feet of these people, you know, of which I'm one, you know, I'm a, I'm a little sucker on the end of a tentacle, you know, <laughs> placing the mail in the mailbox. But I digress. If you want postal content, then yeah, there's there's plenty of it in drill. <laughs> I, I, I talk about my day job quite a bit, but to make the day job more tolerable, I've I've basically begun working with Hermes mm. as my uh, you know as as an egregore that uh, you know actually has my. Uh, my well-being at heart, <laughs> you know, as, as, as a postman, you know, as the, as the God of messengers, you know, I find working with him, uh, each morning I throw up a little prayer, uh, throw up a little prayer to him as I'm leaving the depot in my, in my posty van, you know, I'll, I'll thank Hermes for, you know, cool, refreshing breezes when it's hot out and, you know, I'll, uh, it's, I'm just incorporating him, from from my eight to five ex existence, he is he is my my god and savior. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it's largely my focus has been has been on drill. You know, it's I, I've I've found myself almost unable to work on anything else mm. uh, due to the intensity of the uh, of my hopes for drill. You mm. know, for one thing. Uh, I kind of don't want to leave it alone just yet. You know, I want to make sure it gets out into the world and it starts getting its readers and mm -hmm. then I might relax a little bit. Right. But in terms, in terms of the, you know, the, the, the working aspects of the, uh, of the, of the curse, the drill is of the weapon, the drill is, mm -hmm. you know, it needs, it needs almost constant psychic maintenance on my part. Oh, wow. You know, I'm I'm very you know in, invested in in seeing it come to its come to its fruition. So mm. it's been difficult to go back to you know the the novel I abandoned to write drill. Right, right. Because I, I was in the middle of of a particular uh, other book entirely. She walks into the sea, mm -hmm. which is, you know totally different from what drill was. Drill was very much a reaction to specific events in my life that occurred at a specific time. You know, and so she walks into the sea, was terribly interrupted, and now sits unfinished. You know, I even kind of remember that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you talking about that. And like, it, do I even have this right that like drill essentially started as you writing, like writing publicly about things that were going on in your life that turned like I think like, and then that, those posts, like Facebook posts and stuff, became. <sighs> kind of grist for the mill of, what, of, of the bigger machine that became drill. I don't recall that specifically, but I can see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, there were some, there were some elements, you know, that I did write about on, on, on the socials, just trying to recall what, what, but you know, that's the very nature of social media. It's like an amnesiac field mm. in a way, <laughs> you know, yeah. If you say I did it, Jason, then I did it. <laughs> but I can't remember. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, uh, it it uh, like I, I guess it felt like the drill story uh, sort of pulled pulled itself out of you in that respect. Like that it, it was, did. You know, it did. It um, was it was a, it was a very fast write. Mm. Like I was really once 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 I got once I got cooking with drill, it was uh, it was a very fast one. Usually, it takes me about two years to write a novel. Oh wow! And yeah. this one was something something around eight eight and a half months. Oh wow! You know, wow. it poured out of me pretty pretty uh, pretty quick. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of like, uh, I was, so I was going to ask a more generally gnostic question, but like, if anyone here is listening and they feel like they are sort of art gnosis in, uh, inclined, like they want to they want to be a a creative Gnostic in that, in the sense that I think you and I tend to operate in, like we're trying to transmute the artwork we make um, f coming from these sources of inspiration. Um, uh, is there anything that like, uh, in terms, just in terms of your practice, like, uh, you know, writer's advice, quote unquote, like um, anything that you would tell somebody who wants to 
wants to try to say explore in these directions or simply wants to create um like write 10 minutes a day do you know what i mean something that simple sure yeah. uh i find i find the day has its rhythms hmm. right i mean I've, i love the concept of a, the book of hours hmm. right where certain hours have certain qualities you know i find that that sort of map of time in a daily sense to be interesting so for me, when it comes to, you know, entering into a creative mode, you know, I can't do it in the middle of the day, mm. you know, when Apollo is at his height, you know, that's the time for Apollo and Hermes and, uh, you know, the, the, the daylight stuff. I do find, you know, if you, if you are going to write, you have to find the right time during the day. You know, some, some writers would say, well, t the bright time is any time, <laughs> but yeah. But honestly, if you're trying to do, I think if you're trying to do honest work, then you have to, uh, you have to access your mind and you have to access your creativity at a time when it's, when it's going to be unbridled, shall we say. Mm. So for me, that time is early in the morning. Mm. You know, just, I, I wake up out of dream, you know, I wake up uh, out, of, out of my dreams and I, I don't waste any time making coffee or anything. You know, I'll sit, I'll sit down at the computer and I'll begin to I'll be, I'll begin to write because at that point, at that point, you know, my ego doesn't have you know it's still yawning you know it's still <laughs> it's still got sleep in its eyes it doesn't you know it doesn't have the same hold over over my creativity as as it would say in the in the later parts of the day. Mm, interesting. So you know. Yeah, in terms of approaching it gnostically like that, I feel there are times when the bars are less, uh, less, less apparent. Ah. You, can, you can and I can write through them. You know, I like that. Yeah, to, to bring it back to your bar and, and analogy there. Ah. Yeah. Um. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I, I was gonna. Um, uh, my, my my slightly cheeky connection to that too would be like, um, the the uh the best time to write is the be the rhythm of the day the next best time to write is when you can actually find the time <laughs> yeah no absolutely you know, what I mean? <laughs> you know that's that's you know i'm just you asked me what my what what, what my of what my personal yeah. uh uh, uh t take on that was so yeah early uh, in the day if you if you if you can any other time if you can't it's yeah uh, yeah and it's you know really I, I, it's, you have to have the you have to have the tap open and flowing before the inspiration can come right yeah but and this yeah. is actually kind of this is why i was sort of being cheeky about it because like i spent a lot of time so my, my day job is i produce and direct theater which i'm very lucky mm -hmm. to do but i don't get to do it every day you know um most of my days are emails and spreadsheets and scheduling and producing sure sure um, um, and I, uh, for years had a lot of, um, uh, writing aspirations. I've made comics. Um, but, uh, but then probably for the last, uh, up to about two years ago, I, and about f the five years before that, I think I was in a real drought of creativity because I just wasn't making time for it. And so mm -hmm. I was never turning on the taps. If that makes sense, I would have ideas yeah. for stuff, but never sat yeah. down and turned on the taps and like. Um, and now, like now, I've got a practice of at least ten minutes a day, no matter yeah. what. You know, absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, and journaling that, too. Journaling yes. too. I yeah. should mention. You know, I mean, that's that's basically how I would turn on the tap, mm -hmm. or, or I'd make some long Facebook post on a subject. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. either for on my, on my personal page or with the threshold church of really yeah, risen. You know, I, I write out some homily, and that would that would that would get me going, and then I'd be able to turn to the book, and and you know, ha everything would be charged up and ready to go. Yeah, you know, and the tap tap was open, and the information was flowing. Mm. You know, I'm very I'm very much, you know, William S. Burroughs was a big influence on the style of this book, mm. and and I I really take his I really take his uh, his uh, views on this pretty pretty seriously i do believe that this as, as as you said earlier this creative material comes from elsewhere mm. and it's somehow you know transmitted and transmuted through the through the act of active creation mm. right 
So yeah, you got to have the tap open. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. And that's a, uh, coming from elsewhere. That's interesting. Like I, one book I'm, I'm working my way through um, is called a torn letters from otherness. I think something like that. And it's, it's whole thing is, is that it's, it's, it's apophatic. Like it's negative spirituality in the form of like the impossible to describe like, sure. Um, uh, and reading it is interesting because the writers are very, they're doing their best to avoid ever actually describing anything while also talking about it, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and th they're being very philosophical about it. They're doing their, they're doing their work and it's, it's a good read, but it's a hard read. But what I will say is that there were, there were moments where I was like, I think you're just talking about trying to make art, you know, <laughs> like, Could um, be, eh? yeah. like, like a, like a poet or a theater director or an actor or like, Often what we're striving for is this moment of connection that is ineffable, cannot be exactly described perfectly, but we are trying to find the right words to get to the place where the ineffable happens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's the connection yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, like, yeah. I'm making with what you were saying there about coming from someplace else, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so this, this might be kind of, we're starting to kind of wind down here. Um, oh, before we wind down, I should say, uh, in a in a, a a sop to the forces of of the egregore of capitalism, uh, talk <laughs> has, a, has a Patreon. That's right. <laughs> um, and uh, we uh, we we don't do a lot of um, like we don't have a premium member feed where we don't do a lot to um, to keep anything only for people who who contribute. But if anyone feels like they're enjoying this talk, they want to see more of it, they want to see it happen more often. Please feel free to join our Patreon, which is I think. Uh, uh, patreon.com slash Gnostic. It'll also be in the links of our of all of our show stuff, so I'll just mention that briefly. Um, nice. uh, but uh, yeah, so like as we're kind of winding up, what what's kind of capturing your interest now? I know drill is kind of your main focus, but like as a, as a Gnostic, as a thinker, as a sorcerer, um, yeah, like any particular theories or um, expressions that have kind of caught, caught your eye lately? Theories or expressions. Well, I'm, you know, I don't think I'll ever rid myself of the uh, interest in the simulation theory. Mm. You know, I don't think that's ever going to go away for me. Uh, the the idea that this is somehow that all this is somehow a projection. Mm. You know, on you know on a very real level. I mean, it's it's it is real. We're having a real experience, you and I. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and yet, and yet, there's that constant niggling in the back of my brain, you know. So that's the, the that's that's a theory I'll be I'll be stuck with for a while. Still, still working on it, hmm. uh, and what what it means for me personally. Uh, as far as uh, things I've been, you know, I've been interested in uh, this uh, anime show that my kid is into. Hmm. My boy is just obsessed with this particular anime show called Jujutsu Kaisen. And it's about okay. sorcerers. It's about sorcerers who use jujitsu. You know, it's it's a it's a uh, it's a mixed martial art, basically. <laughs> uh, the pencil mileage on this show is insane. They spend so much in 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 uh, animating this thing it's mm. really vi visually something to watch really something amazing to put into your eyeballs but it's got that wonderful mix of sort of uh, uh very bureaucratic japanese culture mm. you know when, when they approach this you know this whole jujitsu schools you know and how they function how they operate and you've got special mm. grade sorcerers and special grade cursed spirits and levels one two you know and then they yeah they spend. They save their pencil mileage when they go when they start going and talking about the bureaucracy of it, right? <laughs> and then yes. they spend it spend it for the action sequences. Fascinating stuff to me at, at this uh, stage of the game. <laughs> we we occasionally do episodes of what I call pop gnosis, where we we take yeah, pop yeah. culture stuff and and then riff on it with a gnostic lens. So I'm going to watch a few episodes of that. And then we'll call you back up for another show on on uh, sure. yeah. surprising. Yeah. 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 Why not? Um, <laughs> Uh, not yeah, to mention a show on uh, simulation theory. Like, there's a part of me that wants to say, like, let's just let's just have a public conversation about that on on Talknosis here. Um, sure. Let's let's get more people than just me, though. <laughs> well, of course, yes, yeah. Because my, uh, my 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 English falls apart when I when I when I try to put across my ideas about the simulation. 
Mm. Yeah. No, for sure. Well, I mean, yes, that's. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think I, I want you there, but yes, we'll get a, we'll get a few more folks on it. Sounds um, good. Um, is there anything? Uh, well, so maybe actually we should say I maybe should have even said this at the beginning. If somebody wants to pick up a copy of Drill, where do they sure. go? Yeah. So you can go to Word Horde right now. So that's okay. Word Horde, W O R D H O R D E dot com. Uh, it'll be under their books tab. It's called Drill. Uh, you can pre order it. I think you get a bunch of swag with the pre order. You get some signed book plates and other, other treats from, from Word Horde. That's the mm. benefit of, you know, uh, uh, su supporting in, indie, uh, indie booksellers, indie book publishers. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you get extra stuff, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for now you can pre-order it, but of course on the sixth, it'll be available everywhere. So uh -huh. it'll be on Amazon and BNN and you can order it into your local bookstore or have your library stock it. That's another, I, honestly, I don't care how it gets out there. I don't care how you read it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how, care how it gets read. I only care that it gets read because being read is part of what makes the magic work <laughs> literally yeah that's yeah literally yeah uh that's a um what is it weird studies had an episode of uh, i think called the the pianist and the lobster or something uh, based yes, on yes. a new york times article i think uh but the 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 core kernel that really captured me there was that they were saying like music is not the piano or the pianist or the audience or even the room but all of those things it's, in a moment in time you know exactly um, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's very much this, like, you know, drill is not just the book or you or the reader, but all of those things. All of those things. Yeah. 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 Um, well, this has been fantastic. Um, I hope that uh, anyone listening to this or watching this, if they haven't already gets a copy of drill and uh, uh, lets us know what they think. Maybe we'll have you for a follow up uh, if a lot of people are having a lot of cool reactions to it and have more questions. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, and this has been uh, great. if uh, if nothing else, we'll have you on for for more more content here in the future. Um, Scott, thank you so much, and thank we you, will. Jason. You're welcome. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have you on again soon. And thanks everybody for listening. And we'll talk to you later. <laughs>